You've waited all summer, and it's finally here. High school football is back in action. Join Brian Simudio, Alex Margulies, Dan Gustin, and Mike Rippey for the inside scoop on the year ahead. The players you want to watch and the teams you don't want to miss. Nolan Auto Group's Countdown to Kickoff, presented by Sonic, America's Drive-In, starts right now. Welcome to Damani Ranch High School and the Dolan Auto Group's Countdown to Kickoff, just presented by Sonic. I'm Brian Samudio, Alex Margulies, and Dan Gustin joining us here at the home of the Northern 4A champs in high school football, the Damani Ranch Mustangs. Guys, I can't believe what happened to the summer. We're talking football already. Football, are you kidding me already? It's August, we're here, and I tell you what, there is so much parody this season. Usually, we come into the show and it's all about the Reed Raiders. Are they going to repeat again? Last year it was Damani Ranch finally came in and unseated them. And now, to me, I feel like there's three or four teams that could win it this year. I agree with you totally. Uh, Damani Ranch certainly would be the team you look at. The Reed Raiders will be in the balance. McQueen uh, Lancers, with what they have built up this year, we've talked about them. I think they're going to be a, a team to be reckoned with. And who knows who else can step out. But I think those are the teams that everybody's looking at right now. Some of the biggest drama of the offseason, though, happened off the field as Ernie Howran left Reed to take the reins over at Bishop Minogue High School. We caught up with Coach Howran and his new team. It's hard to find a school with a more interesting storyline than Bishop Minogue this season. We want them to know that we're coming out there to hit them hard and that they're, they might not come off the turf sometimes. Aside from landing arguably the best coach in the North 4A with Ernie Howran. wobbly. You know, I, I, I was excited for a change, you know. Hey, uh, I, I will always love Reed. You know, there's things about Reed High School that uh, will always have a place in my heart. But uh, at the same time, the opportunity to coach these minors here, who, would, who wouldn't want to do that? Opportunity is knocking at Minogue. This minors team returns 24 varsity players from last season, many of them still only juniors. You know, a lot of coaches would always kind of, when they have a lot of juniors on, on varsity, they say, oh, we're just young. And, well, I, I'm not going to use that because our guys have a lot of varsity experience already under, under their belt. So I feel like we're going to have guys that are going to, we could call them two year seniors. You know, this is, some of those juniors, this is like their second year on varsity. They have the experience, they understand how to play at a high level, that game speed that's needed for the varsity. Howard's biggest challenge, implementing a new system, one that helped the Reed Raiders to a 133 and 38 overall record since 2004. Um, it's a lot different. We've been working super hard. Um, Coach Howard has really got, got a good system going here. He wants to win, we want to win, and we're all really excited. We've been working hard, we're super excited. <laughs> One thing is for certain, for the first time in a couple of years, the Bishop Minogue football program is buzzing. The sky's the limit. Um, we're just shooting for, ev for everything right now. Um, Howard's really putting together the system, and we're just following his game plan, and he's, he's shooting for big things this year. It's been a rebuilding process that's finally coming to a head. Oh, I'm really confident. Um, the guys that I have surrounding me, I, I couldn't choose a better group of guys. And now we have the coaching staff in. I, I don't think there's a better group or team out here in the north. So it's definitely big. Well, you're talking about a proud program too, is Bishop Minogue, you know, those, those three A titles under Joe Sellers and now trying to get back. And they went out and got their man this offseason in Ernie Howard. They hired the coach they wanted. They brought in some players. And they had 78 players turn out for the varsity. The thing for Bishop Minogue this year is they still are lacking size. You, know, you can have the coach you want, you can have the offense, you have to have the players. I think Ernie's going to have a challenge right there with they don't have any real size at Minogue right now. You know, the way that Ernie Howard has been as a coach, you, it's hard to bet against him having success. Um, but you have to imagine there's got to be some kind of a period where it's going to take maybe a year or two. Uh, does, does Bishop Minogue get better than last year at four and six? Yeah, maybe. Maybe they tack on another win or two. Are they ready to compete with some of the other stalwarts here in the north? Probably not. But, you know, you give Ernie Howard a couple years, get these kids in the weight room, start to add more numbers, continue to bring in some players from other schools and other areas. Uh, I think certainly with him at the helm, Bishop Minogue could really start to rise here in the next couple of years. Either way, I think we're already seeing that the Minogue family itself has bought in. And I think when you're talking 78 players in camp, 
the kids have bought in and t sometimes that's the toughest thing you can get. They open up at home against North Valley's in week one. Coming up next on Countdown to Kickoff, that's brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and our friends over at Sonic. We're gonna talk to the Northern Champions in the 4A, that's the Money Ranch. Welcome back to the Dolan Auto Group's Countdown to Kickoff show presented by Sonics. You know, we're going to talk about the champs, the guys who call this field home right now, Damani Ranch, the Mustangs, and their talented quarterback going to try and make another run at a Northern 4A title. Here at the ranch. McMahon fakes the pitch. And on the money, that is Riggle. And Riggle will go in. Oh, my goodness. I know it's a long off season, but now the target squarely on your back. What's it been like now looking down from the championship spot? Um, we're happy to be where we're at, and uh, we're happy that the season is here. We've had a long off offseason, um, sticking with our program with what we've been doing the last few years to get to this level, and um, it's always nice to get there, but harder to stay on top. Um, it feels good. I mean, we understand that having a target on our back, we're going to get everyone's best game, and we love the competition, so we're looking forward to this season. We have high expectations. You know, it's nice to have that target because, you know, Everyone says it's always harder the second time, and I believe it's true. So it just kind of pushes us to work harder on the offseason. That way we can prepare for what's coming on the season. What were you guys doing this offseason to get ready for this? We were mostly building a relationship between all the players, all the returning players and the upcoming players, to get that bond going and then get that mental toughness ready. What's been going on this offseason? What you been doing? Um, a lot of hard work. You know, we we had to make a like become more of a family because we had a lot of younger guys come up and. And, you know, just getting to know everybody and getting that same connection we did last year so we could do what we did last year. Has the mentality changed at Damani Ranch? Has the culture changed when it comes to football? Um, a little bit, but, you know, we're still we're still going for those goals as we did last year. We act like we haven't won that, that championship. We're going to work our way back up like we did last year. You know, before Coach Dupree came here, it wasn't really like a winning mentality. But Coach Dupree definitely brought that with him from Vegas, that winning mentality to go and get get what's yours. Numbers down a little bit, but some good senior leadership on, the, on this team. What's going to have to carry Damani Ranch? Um, I feel like our conditioning is going to have to carry and our, our mentality. Um, yes, we have lower numbers, but we still have the tools to get it done. McNamara gets away somehow and then throws complete. 
you got some great targets to throw to this Absolutely. year. Tell me about your receivers. Um, we have a great receiving core this year. We got all, all of them except one coming back. Um, huge targets this year, especially Drew Jacobs. Um, have a thousand yards last year. Expect them to have a good season this year. McNamara will fake it. He'll go up top. Got a man open, and the catch made, and still in bounds is Jacobs. How tough is it to stay at this level? I mean, you finally you've won a 4A title in the North. Mm -hmm. How tough is it to stay at that level? Oh, it's tough. I mean, we understand all the work that it took to get that number one, and we're we're willing to do it again. And nothing beats that feeling. We have to give credit to the champs for at least one thing. They are challenging themselves out of the blocks, hosting Northgate out of California. It's Walnut Creek in week one. Then they're at Edison, Fresno, a powerhouse who always has a ton of speed in week two. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, they finally have climbed the mountain and become a regional champion. But now with the target on their back, how does that change things a little bit for Damani Ranch? Obviously, they've got a very talented quarterback in McNamara, um, but they did lose some pieces, especially up front. And as you know, well know, Dan, you can have a great quarterback, you can have some great receivers, but if no one's blocking, could have some trouble. I know there might be a little bit of growing pains there. They lost four of their five starting linemen. The only guy back is their center, and he was 175 pounds last year. If you're a defensive coach or an opposing coach for Damani Ranch, you tell your defensive players 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, the pass is gone. He's going to get it off in two and two and a half seconds. So a three-step drop, that's the only way you slow down Cade McNamara is get the defensive pressure on him, and you've got to do it in under three seconds. Coming up next on Countdown to Kickoff, he had an offer from Nevada, but he will be playing in South Bend for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. We'll introduce you to Cade McNamara after the break. Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and presented by Sonic. You know, he started as a true freshman here at Namani Ranch High School at quarterback, and he has absolutely blossomed over the last four years, and he's on his way to Notre Dame. Here's Cade McNamara. McNamara will keep it, and he will get in. Cade McNamara will get the go-ahead touchdown. Kids like Cade don't come around very often, you know, at any position, um, much less a quarterback. It seems that others agree with Damani Ranch head coach Sean Dupree as Cade McNamara racked up offers from Division I programs this summer, ultimately deciding to become a member of the Fighting Irish. I felt like Notre Dame was a perfect fit for me. 
Me and Coach Reese and Coach Kelly had a really good relationship. I felt like what they wanted out of a quarterback, what they described, described me perfect. Um, I love the walking campus and they're selling out every game and I love the tradition of Notre Dame. McNamara looking right, comes back, throws over the middle, and it's good, touchdown. Coach Reese and Coach Kelly clearly wanted more than just someone who could play quarterback. And Dupree says they got the well-rounded human being they were looking for in McNamara. Kate's a great student athlete, um, high GPA kid, a studier, um, you know, both on and off the field and in the classroom. And it's a pleasure to have him. I um, can do a lot of things with him. And, um, you know, it helps a, uh, having a team leader on the field and a coach on the field. Um, he helps people get to where they need to go. And uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I can open the offense up and do a lot of different things. Damani Ranch wide receiver Richie Garcia echoes his coach's sentiment about his quarterback, both on and off the field. In the community, he's a great guy. You get to know him. He's funny. He's just your normal, normal guy around. Doesn't act like he has all those big offers. And very humble. Very humble. He's a great leader, and you know, having him is a is a blessing. Watch, 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 watch. And what separates Cade when he puts on the pads? McNamara fakes the pitch, and on the money. Well, once again, it's a personality trait rather than athleticism that defines him. He's a competitor, um, which is probably the best asset that he has is his competitiveness. And he brings everybody else uh, the level up. And um, I think any college coach would, would uh, be thoroughly happy and, and enthused to have him on their, on their roster. With his recruiting process over, the junior now plans to throw all his competitiveness into one team the next two years. Ever since I committed to Notre Dame, it's been a huge weight off my shoulders. Um, Without the recruiting, mean, I can focus on Demonte Ranch football from now on. You know, I do have to laugh a little bit talking to Cade McNamara uh, for the first time in, in about a year. The voice has dropped a little bit. He is becoming a young man, you can tell, and Notre Dame is getting a quality student athlete. It's amazing how he was able to burst on the scene this quickly in terms of college recruitment. And you wonder, had he drawn it out a little bit longer and not selected Notre Dame so early in the process, he may have seen a lot of big offers continue to roll in and maybe get into a situation like we saw, we talked about in the other show with Brandon Cajo, coming in with pretty much offers from everyone. I mean, clearly Cade McNamara is on a lot of teams' radars. Right now, verbally committed to Notre Dame. We'll see if that sticks. It, for now, it seems like he is very much all about the Irish. And he wants to produce in his last two years, his junior year. Remember, he's only a junior. Mm -hmm. He's got this year and next year. Gives him two years to do it in a relaxed fashion mm -hmm. and to build the offense around him. So I think he'll get much, much better. We will have to see. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him grow. Dan's final segment with us. We appreciate your time, sir. You bet. See you this year on Friday Night Rivals. We're going to bring in longtime coach Mike Rippey to take over for Dan coming up next. After the break, we preview the Carson Senators. That's next.
Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and presented by Sonic. Longtime Northern Nevada high school football coach Mike Rippey going to join us here for the rest of the way. Now, it was a down year last year by Carson's standards. Five and five, lost to Reno in the Northern playoffs, but Blair Roman's team is back for more this year. Here they are. Ready, begin. C -A -O -S -O -A. Last year, we had a, a season where um, you know, we may not have win as, as many games as we had the previous three seasons before that, but um, biggest thing about last year I was proud of is um, we faced a lot of adversity with some key injuries, especially towards the end of the year, um, losing our quarterback, losing a couple of our key contributors. So, you know, the biggest thing was, um, biggest takeaway from last year was how good our attitude about taking that kind of thing on was. You know, we we had some guys go down and it, it hurt our season, but uh, we definitely had some guys step up and they're gonna have a big role this year. So we expect uh, we expect a lot better year this year. Abel, clearly a focus of any team that's gonna be playing you guys. What are you expecting from him in particular this year? Leadership, you know, he's matured on and off the field. Um, he's a great example to our any of our kids in our program on and off the field. Um, works uh, is harder, harder than anyone in our program. And um, that's probably the biggest thing I'm proud of is just that sense of um, leadership that we've been able to develop year to year where some of our most talented kids work the hardest. That's hard to, that's hard to get. Abel, a lot of expectations for you this year. How do you handle that? You know, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. I've, I've worked hard, so I'm ready for anything that comes at me. I know a lot of teams are really looking to stop me, but um, like Dawson said earlier, can't do it on, can't do it on my own. So um, I'm ready for it. Your coach was saying there's a lot of returners on the offensive line this year. How helpful is that for you? That's a really big thing because uh, they have a lot of experience. They know the plays very well. And then a lot of guys that didn't start last year that got experience playing because some guys went down or something, they're going to step up and it's going to be it's, it's great. What makes you think that this defense is going to be so good? Well, we have a lot of returners. Uh, our D-line is full of returners, our linebackers are full of returners. Everyone on this defense is basically a senior or a returning younger guy. What are the expectations for your squad this year? Our expectations are the same, honestly, every year. We've, we've experienced some success, so there's a certain like built-in expectation, I guess, but every season's different. You know, our biggest goal every year is to beat our rival, and then our uh, second um, goal is to always try to win our league. And then the third thing is to make a run at that regional title and, and, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, have a memorable season that way. Let's go, boys! Come on, come on, come on. Now the Senators head out of town in week one. They're in Lewiston, Idaho, then host Reno week two at Reed week three. So tough out of the blocks for them. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, last year Carson had a lot of trouble with injuries. Uh, they lost their quarterback, Jace Kima, early. Uh, Abel Carter, uh, one of the best players in the league this year, but they got to take the pressure off him. He was worn out at the end of the year, and I think it showed because they, they sputtered right down toward the end of the year and just couldn't come up with the big win. I have to think if they can stay healthy, they're going to be better than a 5-5 five and five team. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a Carson team year in and year out that's usually competing for that North title. Maybe kind of going through a down period right now, but hey, when they have a kid with a car named Carter on the back of a jersey, that usually is a good sign for this program. They've had a lot of great players from that family, and, and Abel has been, been fantastic to watch these last couple of years. Excited to see him and then taking on Reno. First week out of the blocks on Friday Night Rivals. What a great way to start the season. Blair Roman teams usually very well coached, hardworking, and very tough physical football team. We'll have much more coming up on Countdown to Kickoff. This is the night rolls on.
Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff here at Damani Ranch High School. We're going to switch gears for a moment, get away from our previews, and talk about the governing body of athletics in the state of Nevada. Dan Gustin tracked down Donnie Nelson with the NIAA. Welcome to the historic Hawkins House, home of the NIAA. Let's go inside and find out more about the NIAA. Well, one of the organizations that's so crucial to high school sports in the state of Nevada is the Nevada Interscholastic Activities Association, known as the NIAA. To find out more about it, we invited Associate Director Donnie Nelson to tell us more about what you do. Donnie, you're a nonprofit organization, but there's so many things. You're not associated with a state agency, any of the county agencies, in the school districts, but you do so many things to promote high school sports and activities. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gustin, and thank you to the support, too, of Friday Night Rivals, a great partner with the NIA in promoting our student athletes in our outstanding contest. So the Nevada Interscholastic Activities Association, as a 501c3 nonprofit governing body, is just that. We are the governing body of high school athletics and activities in the Silver State. We do a host of activities for our member schools, which includes putting on region and state championship tournaments. We conduct special award programs for our student athletes, like our top 10 student athletes of the year. We have a Hall of Fame banquet, which honors outstanding administrators, coaches, officials, contributors, and other former past athletes to induct them into greatness for our association. But we also have a coaches education program. So people don't know that in order for coaches to be certified in our state to actually work with our student athletes, they have to go through an extensive coaching education, which includes background testing and also rules testing. We also have an officials certification process. So we are lacking officials greatly in the state. We are in need of great people who love high school sports and love sports in general to officiate, but there is an extensive background check. So the people we put out on the field to work our games are highly certified and tested as well. And it's interesting you talk about the need for officials because not only do you cover the state of Nevada, but you're unlike, I guess, the other 51 associations in that you have teams and schools from other states, from California yeah. and Arizona. So really now there are three states that you administer. So the need for officials is so vast because of just the area they cover. Yeah, it's a great point. We are one of 51 state associations under the umbrella of the National Federation of State High School Associations. And every state association in the country right now is struggling for officials. A big part of that is that we are growing by leaps and bounds with our membership. And when you have more schools, it means you have more games. Uh, officiating is a very tough advocation, and, but we are in desperate need of that, and we hopefully people will see this and want to go, you know what, I want to get involved. How can I give back to the great student athletes in Nevada? You talk about growth. When you started almost 20 years ago, there were 82 schools. They're now 117, and that growth is really exacerbating both north and south with private schools and uh, not only the public schools, but the private schools. So to keep that going, you're a budget-based organization. One of the things you need to do is help raise money, and you're doing that now. We do. We only have three revenue sources, and the big one that we need is marketing and sponsorship dollars. So hopefully people want to get interested and be a part of Nevada High School Athletics on just a northern Nevada or a statewide stage. We can offer that opportunity for a lot of recognition. Easy to find out more about the NIAA. Go to their website, NIAA.com. You can find out all the information about them, things that we have talked about, things that you want to know more about. It's easy to do. Just look them up. Coming up next on Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group. It was a big shakeup in North Nevada high school football this offseason. Ernie Howard leaving Reed to go to Bishop Minogue. We'll talk to the coach next.
Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff. Like I said, it was a big shocker this offseason. I know you and I were surprised by this move, but Bishop Minogue went out and got the coach they wanted in Ernie Howren, stealing him away from the Reed Raiders. Here's coach on the move down south. One of the biggest high school sports stories out of 2017 happened just 10 days into January. Absolute bombshell announced in Northern Nevada High School football as the most successful coach in recent history in our area is taking a new job. Ernie Howron, owner of seven regional titles in 16 years at Reed, would be taking his talents 15 miles south. I wouldn't be human if this wasn't difficult, you know? It, it, it's, been, it's been hard. Uh, I love those kids over at Reed. Uh, some great relationships and, and bonds and, and, and things that I will never forget. But uh, there's a time for a change, and change is good. And, and, you know, you can't pass up an opportunity like this to coach at a, an institution like this. What he would be inheriting? A minors team that went 4-6 and six last year and had an early exit in the playoffs at the hands of Howron's Raiders. It's been a little bit more uh, difficult than I had remembered from 16 years ago. That doesn't mean that it's not good, though. It's, it's, it's been a trend, tremendous transition. Uh, the kids have made it so easy. That's what's been awesome about it is the kids at Minogue have just been so receptive to all the stuff that we're teaching and talking about. And there's been great dialogue back and forth with the kids. And uh, it's, that part's been really refreshing, uh, kind of just starting over. Minogue's upside. 24 players that saw time on varsity last season. I feel like we're going to have guys that are going to, we could call them two year seniors. You know, this is some of those juniors, this is like their second year on varsity. They have the experience, they understand how to play at a high level, that game speed that's needed for the varsity. And not to mention a lot of confidence. When you first heard that Ernie Howard was going to be your head coach, what'd you think? I mean, of course you hear rumors, but I mean, uh, to hear some, it sounds a little insane when you hear the best coach in Nevada is coming to your school, and then when you end up seeing him in a hallway, uh, the excitement is just honestly uncontrollable. It's, uh, it's, it's great to see that the opportunities that have been brought over just by a change of coaching staff. Having coaches come in that have such a track record like that, and uh, you know, having coaches who have experience uh, coaching and also being players, it's great. But like any breakup, sides are taken. Coaching means nothing. We still got the same team we've always had. Still a tight knit group. How's the chemistry to get the job done still? Now the collision course is set. Sandwiched right in the middle of the season, Reed on the road in the land of green and gold. You know, we got a bunch of guys that are hungry to win. Now I got to ask you, Coach. I mean, first off, this is a big shakeup in Northern 4A. To see, we've seen it before, though. We saw this happen with Joe Sellers, Wooster to Bishop Minogue. This time, Reed to Bishop Minogue with Ernie Howard. Yeah, that was that, that was something that I think took everybody by surprise. I think uh, uh, Coach Howard had done everything he he wanted to at Reed High School, and, and I think a new challenge presented itself, and uh, he jumped on boat and said, "Let's get after it." So uh, it'll be very interesting to see how he does there. Well, it's kind of an exciting proposition, I imagine. I don't know exactly all the reasonings, but when you're up here and you see what Bishop Gorman's been able to do down in the South, a private school that's been able to bring some kids in from other areas and have a real strong financial support system behind it, what they've been able to turn into over these last couple of years. And I wonder if Ernie Howard, you know, I don't know if he ever gets to Bishop Gorman's level, but maybe kind of turn Bishop Minogue into another one of those powerhouses, one of those private school powerhouses. I think that'd be pretty neat to see if he could pull it off. Either way, if I'm a Bishop Minogue booster or a fan or anything like that, I'm excited because this is energy that's being thrust into the program. Got to like it right there. Coming up next on Countdown to Kickoff, we're going to head down into the valley, Mike Rippey's old stomping grounds, and check in with the Douglas Tiger.
Welcome back to Countdown and Kickoff, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and presented by Sonic. Let's head down into the valley now where the Douglas Tigers, always a team that seems to have tough, hard-nosed kids, and you know this better than anybody. That's how they're brought up down there, and Coach Monfaletto gets the most out of them. Uh, they ended last year on a high note, beat their, their rival Carson City, and uh, I think he wants to build on that. Got a pretty good little quarterback coming back, so I think they'll be in the mix. I think they'll surprise some people. All right, let's take a look at the Douglas Tigers. <laughs> We finished the year at six and five, won the first round of the playoffs. First time that's been done in quite a while. And our kids want to build on that. They're not satisfied with just winning one in the playoffs. So again, we're going to continue to build and move forward. You started last year, right? Correct. Okay, so what did you learn from last year, you know, being the quarterback uh, last, last year? Last year was a huge learning curve for me. I was always learning. It's definitely, it's definitely slowed down this camp, I feel like. And the game's coming to me more naturally all my reads and progressions. Having a returner at quarterback, how important is that for this team? Uh, he's a rock. He's just a, a great team leader, um, and he's got a full year under his belt. And like he said earlier, you know, the game slowed down for him, and uh, I expect him to make great decisions. We have no returning starters on the offensive line, so we've got kids that, it, that have gotten some reps, but there aren't any. So, But the kids that are coming in there, uh, you know, have gotten a lot of playing time and uh, they're going to be just fine. Switching over from linebacker to running back this year starting, uh, what kind of transition is that for you? Uh, it just it feels good. I played running back before, so I mean, I'm just not an unfamiliar position, so hopefully I can lock it down, bring back the name from last year with the big hitters and the fast runners, and hopefully I can do just as good as they did. Football is such a big deal in Douglas. Uh, you know, finally having this be your senior season, what's that like for you? Um, everyone talks about it. Football is like the main thing at the high school. So being on the team is just an honor because everyone knows who we are and we're kind of the leaders of the school almost. What do you think uh, this team's ceiling is this year? No, I think if we can capitalize on our line, we'll do just fine. That's just the main problem right now is getting those puzzle pieces put together and working together as a team. You know, our ultimate goal is to win a, a league championship and go on to zone and uh, beat your rival. There's no sense in playing football if you don't you know, want to win them all. You, know, you talk about that Douglas-Carson rivalry, they now have a big trophy that's actually, uh, it's a little iron cart or a, a mining cart, and it's going to have either Douglas or Carson on it gets to take it home. Why not? I mean, this is one of the best rivalries in the state of Nevada. Yeah, I love the fact that this has become compelling again because there were a few years there where Carson was just rolling over Douglas every year, and Carson had that big run. As you mentioned, Douglas got him back last year and really growing in the right direction, that 6-5 and five mark, winning in the playoffs. So certainly Douglas, a team on the rise, and I imagine when that matchup comes again, Douglas and Carson, Senators are going to want that one back. Uh, that's the big game of the year for both of them, and uh, although they want to win all the rest of them, but uh, when you match up those two squads, that goes way, way back, and uh, there's a little extra when they when they line up against one another. Thirty has got uh, 50 kids on his roster. They open up at Rigby, Idaho in week one. Good test in week two when they take on the Reed Raiders over in Sparks. Coming up next on Countdown to Kickoff, we're going to head up Mount Rose Highway and check in with the Galena Grizzlies.
Countdown to kickoff rolls on here at Damani Ranch High School, but we're going to head across the valley to one of Damani Ranch's biggest rivals and check in on the Galena Grizzlies. Line up under center. Rolls right to get a little protection. In the end zone, the throw, the catch, the touchdown. So, it is not over yet. Galena Grizzlies, what do you want your kids to take away from playing in this program? Um, we've always known here since 1997, we're not the biggest, we're not the fastest, we're not the strongest, but there's other, there's other areas of character that we have to rely on, like toughness. Uh, uh, we, we have to be smart, we have to understand how, how to use our, use our bodies and, uh, and also be in injury free, which is something we weren't last, last season. So that's the thing that we're focused on big time as far as avoiding injuries. If we can do that by being in shape and getting a little bit stronger, we are. What does it mean to represent this high school and have Grizzlies across your chest? Um, it means a lot to me. I've been playing um, for the Grizzlies for SYFL since I was in fourth grade, so I, it means a lot for me to be on varsity this year and I'm really looking forward to being playing varsity. What does it mean to you to wear Galena and Grizzlies across your chest? Uh, well, it means a lot since I moved here my freshman year of high school, and i would never really been around this group of kids, so being able to move up with them and get closer and improve with them has been a really, really big deal for me. Brick by brick, that's your guys' motto. Tell me about that. It kind of has been the last few years. It's been our, in our program, been on our shirts. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's one, one day at a, at a time, one game at a time, one practice at a time. We don't want to look down the road as far as opponents, as far as this season goes. We want to enjoy every day, every moment. So when you try to build a house, it is brick by, by a brick. So we're not going to start off with, a, with a, fi a finished product here. We've got, we got to build it up. Where do you see the strengths of this football team? Um, I think we got a lot of speed, so I think we'll be able to get to the ball quick and make fast plays. Seniors, for sure. I think when you, whenever you have a 20-plus senior class, especially here, I know other programs have more. I've seen you know, senior nights at other, at other schools where there's 30-plus seniors, but we don't normally have as many seniors as uh, we, we do now. So that's something that we're focusing on big time. And they understood, they, they saw kind of, the ups and downs last year as far as injuries, how that, that took a toll on us. And I think they, they ended up learning a lot from it. This group's really good. We're all friends. We're all really athletic. Um, we have a really good uh, team bonding. We're all like brothers. And um, I think it'll help a lot on the field. I know your program has gone through some adversity this last year for the kids that are here. How much has that maybe caused them to band together a little bit tighter? I think a lot. I think losses always do. I think whenever you have a season that you go two and nine in, two and eight in, you have a good senior class coming back that experienced all that, that experienced injuries through it, that experienced playing time through it, were on the field when we were getting kicked. Um, I think that always is a positive. I, I, I look forward to seasons after kind of a down year be, be, because I, th I think you have a, a, a motivated group of uh, kids come, come, coming back. What would it mean to you to be able to get Galena back on the map and, and get this team into the playoffs in your senior season? Uh, it'd mean a lot just for the, the program standpoint. Uh, Coach Ruzik and Sacolaris, I think they do a great job. Coach Edwards, all the other coaches as well. Um, the kids coming up, they, they deserve it. We deserve it. It's just working hard. It's going to get us there. Steve Struzik's team, 2-7 and seven last year, lost their final six games of the year. Open up at Highland and Pocatello, and then hug and North Valley's week two and week three. What do we expect out of Galena? They'll be better. Uh, things things kind of fell apart a little bit last year and uh, for various reasons, but Coach Struzik and his staff have been there a long time. They've gone through good times and bad times, but what they've done is they've gone through them together. Uh, he'll, he'll have them back uh, competing, and, and they'll be tough. Yeah, and seeing those kids, I was out there obviously in the weight room and, and spending some time with them. Their numbers are down, but the kids that are there are committed, and I know that they are really wanting to put Galena back on the map. And, and there were so many injury problems last year, as they talked about, and they feel like if they can stay healthy, continue to work hard, that a 2-7 and seven season's not going to happen again this year. We'll be back with much more and Countdown to Kickoff right after this. Some predictions, and we're going to check in with a new head coach at Sparks High School.
Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and presented by Sonic. Let's get into the 3A division. Uh, last year, Spring Creek was the class at 11 and 1, but you think South Tahoe is going to make some noise? I think South Tahoe is going to be pretty good. They uh, broke through last year. Uh, they got beat by Truckee in the regular season and beat them in the playoff and uh, went down south and, of course, uh, got beat down there. But I think they broke through. They got some pretty good athletes. I think they'll be pretty good. Got a little star power, too. Yeah, McAllen Castles, you don't see this very often from the 3A ranks, seeing somebody get a big power five offer, but he is committed right now to Cal Berkeley, the big tight end, wide receiver, highly sought after by a lot of schools. So somebody definitely to keep an eye on down there. You know, it, it seems like there's a lot of parity in this, in this level where there's a lot of teams that are pretty evenly matched. I think there's gonna be a lot of excitement. It's a lot of fun either way. You see, you get a lot of rural kids, and they're usually from hardworking families, and the kids buy into the system. Churchill County also as well, as you were saying during the break. Yeah, they're, that's always a great league. They're, you, from week to week, you never know who's going who's gonna to win the football game, and uh, they come back, they play hard. Uh, a lot of them could compete up in the foray, and... Uh, and and then do pretty well. So they are a good solid league. And some changes over at Sparks High School as well. Brad Rose replacing Rob Cottrell after 19 years at the helm of the Railroaders. But Rose with a lot of experience, 11 years of coaching experience, including some college experience. Brenna Green caught up with him. Let's go, keep it rolling, baby. Here we go, here we go. Your first year being head coach here, how's it been so far? Great, I've been working with a great group of kids. Um, I've had a great high school, great atmosphere. Um, just really loving the whole experience so far. This is my first uh, go around as a head coach. Um, so again, that's another exciting experience. What's it been like so far with this new coaching staff this year? Uh, I like it, I actually like it a lot. He seems like he's really trying to like help us out this year by getting us into camps and stuff before the season's even started. And he started the football pretty early, which is pretty good. What are the things that are kind of changing around this program with this new coaching staff? Uh, just the, the attitude entirely of the whole team. It's, it's better. It's better than last year. This guy has brought an energy to the team that just wasn't there before. What made you want to come and coach at Sparks? Uh, the reputation. A lot of things I'd heard about Sparks High have been great. Um, great athletic administration, great kids. Um, just, just the great history and past the Sparks High really kind of motivated me to go there. It's something I'm not used to uh, being at North Valley's in terms of a long lasting history like Sparks has. Identify the flat defender. Okay, and then that's who you want to get the ball to. What are you thinking uh, the goals are for, for this year's team? You know, I don't think there's anything less that we uh, hope to do than make playoffs. Uh, we've got a great group of seniors that are with us this year, a ton of talent, a junior class that uh, was very successful at the JV level. So I think really the expectation for us this year is nothing less than playoffs. So hopefully some ch good changes happening over at, at Sparks High School. Rob Cottrell, uh, you know, just a tireless, uh, you know, coach and administrator. Also, he's going to stay as a athletic director over there at Sparks High. So before we go, though, Sierra Lee, what are our predictions? Who do you think that can anybody beat the Money Ranch, Mike? Well, yeah, I think people can beat them, but I don't. I don't think. I don't know if they're going to. I, I would say Demonte Ranch is the champion, defending champion, and they're in good position to defend that title. Uh, after that, it's a. It, it's going to be a, a battle, but uh, I'm going to go with Douglas, and I think Minogue's going to be in the mix too. Do you want any more teams? Let's throw a few more. <laughs> in there. I, I, I like your idea of Minogue. I think by the end of this season, these kids will have had a full summer of weights and a full football season with Ernie Howard. I think kids are going to buy in, and I think Minogue's future is going to be bright. Yeah, and for Damani Ranch, it, it's hard to pick against them when they've got a guy like McNamara. I mean, you talk about a quarterback that's going to go to Notre Dame if he sticks with it, a very highly sought after recruit. But that question mark is, is can they protect him? We talked about four new offensive linemen, just a returning center. So how all that plays out, if the offensive line is a concern and continues to be as a concern this season, maybe it does open up a spot for a Bishop Minogue, for a Douglas. So it'll be interesting. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun all season long on Friday Night Rivals. That'll do it for us tonight here on Countdown to kick off our Sierra League preview, brought to you by the Dolan Auto Group and presented by Sonic. For Alex Margulies and Mike Rippey, I'm Brian Samudio. We'll see you Friday nights this year. Thank you for watching Dolan Auto Group's Countdown to Kickoff, presented by Sonic America's Drive-In, your local high school sports on My21 TV.